Greetings, Jeff Weiss back with a uh, lecture for Unit 3, uh, Plant Physiology Processes for Growth and Reproduction. Um, just a word of encouragement to you, uh, there is quite a bit of uh, science in uh, Units 2 and 3. Uh, some of this will be a review if you took uh, high school biology, especially advanced placement high school biology. Uh, but this is a college class and it's reasonable to expect you to learn uh, some of the hows and whys of horticulture. Uh, we'll be getting to the what's, uh, how to, uh, uh, and more of the practices of horticulture in upcoming weeks. So hang in, try to learn this, uh, some of this uh, plant uh, anatomy and physiology stuff. And uh, uh, if this is challenging for you, uh, rest assured some more uh, easily understood material is coming up in the future. So a uh, couple of items uh, for the schedule. Um, the Unit 3 assignment is due on Saturday and the discussion uh, question asks you to copy uh, one of your answers from the assignment. So I'm not going to require the discussion to be due until Saturday unless you're working ahead. And then uh, uh, replies will be due the following Wednesday. That'll actually be the Wednesday of Unit 4. So I hope that's not confusing, but I'll uh, try to clarify this in an announcement. But um, for Week 3, you've got all week to work on, uh, on your uh, assignment and your discussion. And then the replies to the discussion will be due the following week. Uh, I've put in some uh, uh, audiovisual uh, materials. There's some excellent videos by Paul Anderson, a high school teacher from Montana. Uh, there was also a, uh, a video by him in Unit 2. Uh, there's also a basic uh, uh, video on photosynthesis that might be worth watching uh, if you want to get uh, down into the detail of these uh, physiological processes. So again, a long list of terms and concepts, and um, uh, I think what I'll do is I also have a study mate exercise for Unit 3, which I call uh, um, Jeopardy, or Physiology Jeopardy. Uh, so I'll put that in there again as another optional exercise, and you can uh, use it to build your vocabulary and, uh, for physiology if you uh, wish. It's an op optional exercise. Learning outcomes for this week. So uh, there's some big ideas uh, in this unit. Uh, includes uh, plant growth and um, uh, growth stages. Um, some critically important processes required for plant growth and reproduction, including photosynthesis, respiration, transpiration, and translocation. We'll get into uh, those details in a little bit. And we're going to begin to get into the rest of the course, which is to identify ways in which horticulturalists can manipulate uh, processes to increase plant productivity and quality. So this is the connection between science and practice is uh, understanding how plants grow and reproduce in order to um, utilize practices that will increase their productivity and quality. And then, uh, and this, is, uh, this gets to the ideas of sustainability and uh, um, ethics uh, to recognize some of the unintended consequences of the actions that we, that we take. So um, we'll be getting into that in a little more detail, but um, this course is a combination of science and practice and um, recognition of the impacts of what we're doing. So all of those uh, begin to come together for you in this week's assignment. So let's jump in. Uh, review quickly. Anatomy is the form of a plant. Uh, the physiology is the function. And the two come together here in this uh, a view of a uh, bonsai tree, um, physical structure, and the processes and functions. Uh, you need to have an understanding of both in order to really um, uh, understand uh, the science of plants. And here are some of those major processes going around uh, this, uh, uh, this wheel. 
Uh, photosynthesis is how plants uh, produce food and sustain themselves. Uh, respiration is how uh, plants uh, maintain the function of their cells and uh, and themselves indeed. Um, they um, exchange um, oxygen with the uh, uh, with the environment just like uh, uh, animals and people do. However, the balance is between photosynthesis and respiration. If the plant is has more is producing more carbon uh, through photosynthesis than it's losing through respiration, the plant is growing and healthy. Uh, transpiration is the exchange of uh, gases and water uh, between the plant and the environment. Translocation uh, we talked about a little bit with phloem and xylem is the movement of uh, materials up and down the plant and reproduction uh, uh, we, and growth, we know what they are, but we'll be getting into a little more detail on both of those topics as we go. So uh, growth uh, of plants uh, starts out with cellular division and enlargement. And um, cellular division is occurring in these two, uh, I hope you can see my cursor, uh, in these two uh, circles or, or parts of the uh, of the diagram. Uh, this is where um, cells uh, reproduce. Uh, one cell divides and forms two cells. That's cellular division, also called mitosis. That's how uh, cells and plants grow. And then on the other ends, there's uh, meiosis. This is uh, uh, a cell dividing itself into two uh, parts, each of which has one uh, chromosome, and those uh, chromosomes, here it is, dividing into uh, uh, cells with only one chromosome, and those two uh, chromosomes through the process of meiosis, uh, pollen and uh, uh, cells, uh, reproductive cells in the ovary unite to form uh, those are haploid cells. They unite in the um, in the ovary to form diploid cells, and those cells continue on uh, reproducing through the process of mitosis, cell division, uh, to um, uh, increase the, the the size and complexity of plants as they grow and develop. Now, cellular enlargement is a little different. Cellular enlargement is an expansion of a cell, and that can happen independently of cell division. So the um, cells that we looked at last week from bark uh, can uh, expand uh, themselves and form lignin and um, uh, other uh, structural tissue in the cell walls. Uh, that's cellular enlargement. That's different again from cellular division. So these are complex concepts, but I just wanted you to become familiar with these three ideas of the um, cell division that increases the size of a plant, the cell division that allows plants to recombine their DNA and uh, form new um, uh, uh, new plants with different characteristics and cell enlargement which is the growth of individual cells especially growth in the structural parts of the cells uh, that allow trees and uh, uh, other plants with uh, especially trees and uh, stems uh, to increase their uh, structural strength so growth, uh, cellular division and enlargement. Uh, cell growth uh, of a plant occurs in, um, in stages. And uh, the f stage when a plant is small tends to be slow. Uh, but when seedlings, uh, when seedlings uh, grow, um, that growth uh, rapidly increases. And then as plants uh, begin to uh, uh, mature and bear fruit, that growth slows down and becomes more steady over the life of the plant. Uh, another aspect of growth is cellular differentiation and de-differentiation. Um, you've all noticed that when you, uh, when especially early in plant development, if uh, the top of a plant breaks off, um, the plant will um, 
uh, grow back. Uh, those marismatic cells that we talked about last week uh, diverge or make different kinds of cells to make different functions and they can revert back and form new tissue uh, and, and sprout uh, after they've been uh, uh, damaged in order to repair a wound or uh, uh, grow after a uh, uh, after after damages occurred. Polarity. Uh, polarity is the tendency of a plant to grow or develop in different directions as in response to gravity. Um, important concept. Uh, shoots go up and roots go down. Uh, but that is a response to uh, to gravity and uh, an adaptation that plants have made and it's uh, due to the effect of certain hormones in the plant uh, which we'll talk about in a few slides. Some of those uh, organic uh, chemicals uh, are produced as a result of photosynthesis uh, those are uh, carbohydrates, especially monosaccharides like glucose, um, and then those um, those simple sugars are uh, metabolized into more complex sugars uh, in in cells, and in turn are uh, produced into polysaccharides, multi-chain carbohydrates like starches, glycogen, and cellulose. Those are the uh, um, plant sugars that are stored in uh, roots and, and stems and become the um, uh, starches, uh, the cellulose that uh, provides uh, structure to the stems and bark and uh, wood of woody plants. Uh, lipids are the fats and oils. Um, we're um, very familiar with uh, fats and oils, especially in the seeds of plants like sunflowers. Um, three fatty acids uh, are linked to an alcohol molecule uh, in glycerol and triglycerides. Uh, glycerol and triglycerides are where much of the uh, fats are stored uh, in plants to support growth, especially of embryos and uh, we um, tend to snag those um, uh, those seeds in order to use those fats for our own uh, for our own growth and development. Uh, waxes and cutins are frequently found in the uh, leaves of plants especially in the epidural la layers. Um, those are also uh, lipids, uh, fatty uh, molecules um, that are insoluble and used for protection of the plant. Proteins are the more complex uh, chemicals in plants. Uh, they're composed of amino acids um, and um, proteins are in turn um, linked into forming uh, large complex uh, enzymes and the, these enzymes are the um, chemical molecules that serve to prompt or accelerate chemical reactions. Some examples of proteins that are stored in uh, various forms of beans, uh, soybeans, uh, are a rich for, uh, source of proteins and uh, Again, um, consuming uh, seeds of plants gives animals and humans uh, important nutrition um, that is required for um, our own uh, growth and survival. And then some of the most complicated uh, proteins are formed into nucleic acids. Uh, these are the chemicals that are involved in the heredity of cells in, in reproduction. Uh, there's two primary types. Uh, DNA, which is the genetic material um, that is found in all in the nucleus of all uh, living cells and that uh, DNA um, uh, is replicated when uh, cells uh, divide through uh, this, the process of meiosis 
and also give information uh, about how to form new proteins to the RNA and the uh, DNA communicates with the RNA which uh, in, in turn is, uh, is involved in um, replicating uh, proteins that uh, allow uh, plant cells to conduct all of their functions and both the DNA and the RNA share this double helix structure and it's along the middle of this uh, helix that the um, uh, new proteins are made. So with that introduction about uh, the types of molecules that are found in plants and plant cells, uh, we're going to uh, take a few uh, slides on these important plant processes that were uh, described in the uh, first few slides of this lecture. Uh, but first I'm going to take a, uh, a moment, I'm going to take a break, get a drink of water, and urge you to do the same, and we'll continue on with a discussion of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the most important chemical reaction for life on Earth. Um, it's the ultimate source of all of the food that every uh, plant and animal uh, uses uh, to maintain and sustain life. Um, the energy for photosynthesis originates from uh, sunlight and it occurs, the process occurs in the uh, leaves of, primarily in the leaves of plants, but also can occur in uh, bacteria and algae. Um, the um, carbon dioxide is absorbed through the leaves. Um, energy is uh, taken from sunlight and uh, the chemical uh, glucose is formed. So the equation of uh, carbon dioxide plus water plus energy yields carbon, uh, excuse me, yields glucose plus um, water is the formula for the um, process of photosynthesis and the formula for uh, how life on Earth came to be so successful. Um, where does the plant get the water? Well, it gets it mostly through its roots. Where does the plant get the carbon dioxide? Uh, through its leaves. And how does it uh, give up uh, oxygen into the, uh, the byproduct of uh, water and oxygen into the uh, atmosphere? Again, through the leaves. That's through the process of respiration that we'll talk about next. So photosynthesis occurs in plant uh, chloroplasts and uh, critically inside a very small uh, part of the chloroplast called the thylakoid. And you see an insert here in the lower right of the thylakoid uh, where the actual exchange of water, oxygen, uh, and energy through ATP uh, occur. Uh, environmental factors influence how um, how much photosynthesis will occur in plants. Uh, the light intensity, uh, obviously uh, plants that are adapted for sunlight will photosynthesize much more efficiently uh, in, uh, in sunlight. If they get shaded, uh, photosynthesis will slow down or stop. Uh, the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is also an important uh, factor. Uh, sometimes in greenhouses, the carbon, uh, the CO2 concentration uh, gets too low, and uh, either CO2 needs to be pumped into the greenhouse, or plant photosynthesis will slow down because of uh, lack of CO2. On the other hand, uh, some plants uh, can get too much uh, CO2. The concentration uh, can get too high and cause damage to the plant. Uh, there's an interesting uh, uh, research that has been uh, conducted by Duke University artificially increasing the uh, 
level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to simulate uh, uh, what's happening. Uh, and turns out there's winners and losers. But the big winner uh, so far in this study is poison ivy. Uh, poison ivy seems to be thriving on elevated levels of carbon dioxide. So if you're out in the woods, you're likely to see much more um, poison ivy and healthier plants now than you did might have seen years ago before uh, atmospheric carbon dioxide started increasing. Uh, temperature also uh, affects photosynthesis. It slows to a stop for most plants uh, below uh, 40 degrees Fahrenheit, although some conifers can continue to uh, uh, photosynthesize even uh, uh, below freezing temperatures. Uh, availability of water uh, through the roots and uh, sufficient daylight uh, also affect uh, photosynthesis as does the growth and development stage of the plant. Right now you're probably noticing that some uh, plants are starting to uh, uh, dry up and turn uh, colors. That's a combination of uh, shorter days plus uh, dry weather we've been having and uh, also the growth stage uh, as we're nearing the end of the uh, of the growing season uh, plants are uh, finishing their uh, life cycles or completing their growth uh, for the year if they're perennials and that is showing up uh, in reduced photosynthesis and other changes at the end of the growing season. So the reverse process of photosynthesis is respiration and respiration is where uh, the carb, uh, carbohydrates that were formed uh, through photosynthesis are broken down to produce the uh, release the energy that was stored. So plants, algae, and uh, some bacteria are the autotrophs that produce uh, energy through photosynthesis. Uh, animals, fungi, and many other bacteria are the heterotrophs that consume the energy that was stored through uh, photosynthesis. And the chemical formula is almost the opposite of photosynthesis. Um, the uh, glucose uh, plus oxygen breaks down to form carbon dioxide, water, and energy. And those processes occur uh, in our cells when, after we eat food. Uh, the stored energy that ultimately comes from the sunlight captured in, uh, uh, in glucose through photosynthesis is broken down to form uh, the energy that we use to live, grow, and uh, conduct our daily activities. However, globally, there's not enough plants anymore. The global carbon cycle is out of balance. Uh, humans are releasing more carbon dioxide than the world's plants can take up through photosynthesis. So uh, what's happening is a complex uh, series of reactions uh, and they're captured in this in this diagram uh, but you'll get an opportunity to understand more about this and talk about uh, what we can do as humans or horticulturalists to try to uh, restore some of this uh, some of this balance. Uh, transpiration is the next process. Uh, evapotranspiration is the combination of release of water from uh, plants plus evaporation from uh, water uh, standing uh, in uh, lakes and rivers and the ocean. Uh, trees uh, and other plants release vast amounts of water vapor into the atmosphere. And all of that uh, transpiration occurs through the uh, underside of leaves uh, through an uh, opening called a stomate or many openings called stomata which open or close uh, depending on changes in the pressure to the guard cells. So these little tiny holes in the bottom of leaves um, are what is uh, causing transpiration. Uh, if you walk through a cornfield or a soybean field during summer you can f uh, literally feel um, the, the moisture being released uh, by all of these plants 
in their process of photosynthesis, uh, releasing water through transpiration in their uh, in their leaves. Translocation is a further process. Um, we talked about this uh, last lesson in that the uh, materials are translocated uh, across up and down and across plants by xylem and phloem. Um, xylem is the uh, connecting tissue that transport water and materials uh, mainly upward through plants to the leaves and phloem cells are what uh, primarily uh, move uh, plant sugars um, from the leaves to other uh, to all other parts of the plant where they're needed. So a little bit more on water movement. Um, oops, let me go back. A uh, little more about water movement uh, that starts in the roots uh, with root pressure. Um, Root pressure pushes uh, water up into the plant, especially at night when uh, transpiration is, uh, is, is less. Uh, but during the day, all of those little stomates opening and closing and releasing water vapor uh, are what uh, continues to pull uh, water uh, through the roots uh, up into the plant and can uh, raise water uh, in the case of uh, redwood trees 200 feet or more up into the air from the soil. Active transport requires a, a concentration gradient uh, and that is uh, that the uh, um, the level of dissolved materials in the uh, uh, in the water is less uh, and the water moves up uh, through the plant to uh, across cell membranes from cell to cell uh, water moves up through the plant from higher uh, gradients to lower gradients so it's this combination of water pressure created by um, differences in the concentration of um, chemicals in the water plus the upward pressure uh, suction being exerted by uh, uh, opening and closing the stomates uh, that is the secret to water movement in plants. And these little pipes uh, in the xylem cells uh, moving up through the plants uh, create uh, as a little miracle of uh, evolution. Another um, process critical to survival of uh, all organisms is the ability to reproduce. Uh, that um, is reflected in the plant life cycle. Um, each plant has a period of uh, vegetative growth in which the plant uh, grows from a seed to a seedling to a mature plant. Uh, and then undertakes uh, reproductive growth and development as we'll see in the next slide. So the reproductive cycle uh, occurs uh, in starting in the uh, flower uh, and uh, goes down two paths. The male flower part on the right is the, uh, um, the stamen composed of an anther and a filament uh, which produces a grain of or multiple grains of pollen um, through a uh, cell division process of meiosis. And the female um, cell is uh, formed in the ovary. It's an ovum or an egg formed in the ovary uh, through the process of my meiosis. Uh, once uh, the pollen uh, once the pollen grain and the ovum meet in the ovary, uh, they unite to form a embryo, and that embryo uh, uh, goes through many, many uh, processes of mitosis or cell division uh, to form a seedling and then ultimately a new plant uh, that goes into flower. So it's this uh, reproductive cycle uh, that is the uh, key process of uh, growth 
and uh, as a circular process leads from flower um, back through the development process into a new plant that goes into flower. A uh, final uh, uh, part of this uh, lecture is a quick discussion on plant hormones. Hormones are the organic materials, uh, molecules uh, critical to plant functions. Uh, hormones are not uh, used up in chemical reactions, um, but are um, catalysts uh, that um, uh, can be re used and reused in the course of uh, plant development and growth. Uh, Plant hormones can either be natural or synthetically applied, and hormones are widely used in horticulture to produce uh, uh, desired effects on plants. Here's a few of the critical uh, hormones and a brief uh, description of their functions, uh, the physiological functions as they occur in plants. So the first one is auxins. Uh, an example of an auxin is IIA, or IAA rather. Uh, auxins are critical for cell division and expansion, um, cell uh, stem development, uh, leaf expansion, and abscission. Uh, when leaves die at the end of the year, they need auxin to help them uh, uh, release from the plant. And then fruit development. So auxins are um, incredibly important hormones uh, and involved in multiple uh, functions of the cell, uh, multiple functions of plants. Uh, gibberellins um, work in the shoots, embryos, and seeds, and they uh, promote cell division, stem uh, elongation, and seed germination. Uh, cytokinins are involved in the actively develop dividing tissues of plants and are uh, important for cell division, uh, callus or scar formation, along with auxins. Ethylene is an interesting chemical. Um, ethylene is uh, used in fruit and stems and pr promotes ripening. Um, so when you purchase uh, bananas at the grocery store, um, they have likely just been sprayed with ethylene, which turns them from green bananas, which have been shipped from a uh, tropical location where they were grown, uh, t into uh, uh, fruit that will be sold at the grocery store and will quickly ripen. And if you're not eating your bananas, will quickly turn into overripe bananas uh, that uh, can no longer be, be eaten. But ethylene is a... Uh, chemical that's involved in, it's produced naturally in, in, in fruit, in plants, and will promote ripening of uh, all types of fruit. And then finally, abscisic acid uh, found in leaves, stems, and roots is a growth inhibitor. Uh, it shuts down the stomata uh, and roots during periods of water stress so that the plant can conserve water. And it's also uh, found at the in the fall um, and is involved in uh, perennial plants like trees uh, shutting down for the growing season. So the um, materials, uh, the plant sugars that are formed and stored in the leaves are exported to the rest of the plant and those leaves no longer uh, needed uh, are then uh, dropped for the season and uh, um, the materials needed for the uh, growth of new uh, leaves are stored in the buds and the stems and the roots of the perennial plants until uh, conditions uh, favor uh, new growth in the springtime. So a quick slide on plant disorders. Uh, in addition to diseases, uh, plant disorders can occur as a result of any of the environmental uh, factors. Uh, temperature, moisture, light, and nutrients. Uh, and this is another area where horticulturalists uh, must uh, understand and diagnose disorders in order to uh, improve plant productivity and, and quality. So these are examples of horticultural manipulations. Uh, again, uh, going back up to the top of the lesson, understanding the anatomy and the physiology of plants, uh, their needs, uh, 
uh, allows uh, horticulturalists to manipulate plants in ways uh, that can benefit both the plants and the environment to uh, the benefit plants and ourselves. But also, as mentioned earlier, some of our impacts, uh, especially as we uh, as human population increases and we fi try to find new ways to utilize plants, uh, there's a variety of uh, practices that we undertake that have unintended consequences. So some of uh, what we're going to be hearing about in um, this lesson and subsequent lessons have to do with the unintended impacts of humans on plants. So um, breeding, uh, can, uh, we'll learn about uh, genetically modified organisms, uh, GMOs, and loss of varieties. Uh, especially as a result of industrial uh, agriculture. Uh, pollution uh, has uh, adverse effects on plants. There's uh, many um, trees dying in ver various places around the world because of uh, uh, too much carbon dioxide and other pollutants being released into the environment. And then there's our inputs of fertilizer and chemical pesticides into the environment, which uh, has effects on our soil and our uh, the air and water that we and plants require. And then um, finally, uh, depletion of uh, soils through um, erosion and other agricultural practices are the final area of example to human impacts that we're having on our uh, on our planet, and all of these will be considered uh, in further uh, uh, lessons in this class. So that brings us around to assignment three, photosynthesis and respiration. Uh, we're going to look at uh, an article from National Geographic called The Case of the Missing Carbon. Uh, there's a link to the article, and it looks at uh, the carbon that we eat in our food or burn as our fuel ultimately comes from living or fossilized plants. And f unfortunately, humans are releasing far more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere uh, than the plants can absorb through photosynthesis. Um, so there's a mystery, though, about why the rate of carbon dioxide is not going up as fast as expected at the present time. And if you read the article, you should be able to answer the three questions there. Uh, when you do, enter those questions into the assignment for Unit 3 and copy the answer to um, Question 3 into the discussion, into the Unit 3 discussion. And uh, we'll have a, uh, a discussion and your replies based on the answers to what horticulturalists can do to help slow down that buildup of carbon dioxide into the environment. So that's it for assignment three, um, for the lecture to assignment three. Uh, keep up the good work on discussions. Um, try to get your uh, assignments submitted on time. Uh, as you see, it's important to get that done uh, so that we can start our uh, week three discussion. And of course, let me know if you have any questions or, or issues. Uh, thanks, and I'll talk to you again in unit four.